Stuka Joe here. Today we're gonna do a line of sight video. Yes, a line of sight video. Line of sight is one of those considerations that you have to take into account in tactical games. And this will be a line of sight video of a very special game. A Most Fearful Sacrifice. This is a game designed by Herman Lutman about the Battle of Gettysburg, all three days. And it was published recently by Flying Pig Games, and it has a huge and beautiful map by the late and great Rick Barber. So this video gives us an opportunity to take also a look at the map detail. We will be going through the examples that are found in the rule book. And for those of you who want to follow, there's a link in the description to the PDF version of the rule book and these rules start in page 12. And we will be taking a look at the northern map. In this game, there are two huge maps, mounted map boards. This is the northern map. And you can see that it has prominent in the middle, the town of Gettysburg. This game, if the firing unit has a target hex within range and the target is two or more hexes away, the firing unit must also see that target hex. That is what is called line of sight. To determine line of sight, we draw an imaginary line from the center of the firing unit's hex to the center of the target unit's hex. A line of sight can be clear, unobstructed, and unobscured. And in this example, you will see that signified by a solid red arrow. A line of sight can be blocked. In that case, you will see a red arrow up to the point where the line of sight is blocked. And then from there, it continues as a white line, an arrow to the target. And finally, a line of sight can be obscured, in which case the firing unit can fire at the target unit, but the fire will suffer some penalty. And in this case, we represent that line of sight with dashed red lines and an arrow. Dealing with a line of sight may look complex, but it's actually pretty logical, and your first instinct of whether a unit can see another will usually be correct. The relative elevation level of the firing unit's target hex and any intervening hexes is important when determining line of sight, but the exact elevation level is not. So these line of sight rules are based on a basic observation. Is the firing hex higher than, lower than, or at the same elevation level as the target hex? And this will be the basis for all line of sight determinations. So let's take a look at the cases where the firing hex and the target hex are at the same elevation. Intervening towns, woods, and units that are at the same level as both the firing and the target hexes will block the line of sight. And before we begin with the example, a word about ranges. Infantry has an effective range of one hex, which is firing into one of the adjacent hexes, or up to two hexes, which is long range. And as you see there, dismounted cavalry can only fire into an adjacent hex. As to artillery, the range depends on whether the artillery is rifled, smoothbored, or mixed, as shown here in the fire combat ranges table. This example fire from the Union unit in hex 1313 to hex 1315 is blocked by the woods in hex 1314. Here, a smoothbore Union artillery unit would have Pettigrew's brigade with an effective range. However, if a unit would be in hex 1823, it would block fire from the artillery unit to the Confederate unit. Here, fire from the artillery unit in 2526 to 1831 is blocked by the woods 
in 2327 because the line of sight passes through that hex 2327 and all relevant hexes that of the fire the target and the intervening terrain are at the same elevation and note that the elevation here is elevation six and that is denoted by the light green coloring now when both firing and target unit are at the same elevation intervening towns woods and units that are lower than the firing and target hexes will obscure the line of sight there is a separate column shift modifier on the combat results table for firing over intervening terrain and for firing over an intervening unit and you see that it causes a shift of one column to the left but notice that these effects are cumulative so if you're firing over a hex that is a wooded hex and also contains units it would be two column shifts to the left here fire from hex 2526 to the confederate unit in 2032 is obscured by all the intervening woods hexes on the lower elevations but note that only one column shift is applied for obscured line of sight for all those cases not one shift for each case now any intervening hexes elevation level whether occupied by terrain and or units or not that is higher then both the firing hex and the target hex will block the line of sight. Here, Union fire from 2226 to 2127 is blocked by the higher elevation in hexes 2126 and 2227. Here, fire from the Union artillery unit in 3513 to 3523 is blocked by hex 35. 16, which is at a higher elevation than both the firers and target hexes. Now let's take a look at situations where the firing unit is at a lower elevation than the target hex, remembering that intervening town woods and units that are lower than both the firing hex and target hex, or lower than just the target hex, will obscure the line of sight. Here, a Union artillery unit firing from hex 1212 to hex 1615 would be obscured by the intervening woods hexes because they are lower than both the fire and target. Here, the Union artillery unit is firing from hex 1218 to 1615, but there is a unit in hex 1417 which is at the same level as the firing unit. Therefore, here line of sight would be obscured by that unit because it is lower than the target hex. Any intervening hex's elevation level, whether occupied by terrain and or units or not, that is higher than both the firing hex and the target hex, or is at the same level as the target hex, will block the line of sight. Here, the Union Artillery Unit cannot fire from Hex 1718 to 1723 because Hex 1722 is higher than both the firer and the target. Here, the Artillery Unit firing from Hex 1819 to 1823 is blocked by Hex 1822 because it's the same level as Hex 1823. If an artillery unit is firing, any intervening friendly unit that is adjacent to the target hex will block the line of sight, and elevations here are irrelevant. This particular example is not in the rulebook, but it pertains to this situation. This Union artillery unit in 2117 cannot fire the Confederate unit in 2122 because there is a friendly union unit adjacent to the target hex in 2121, and that friendly unit blocks line of sight. And this is a way that the game recreates artillery units withholding fire in order to avoid hitting 
friendly forces. Now let's take a look at situations where the firing unit is at a higher elevation than the target hex. In these cases, intervening towns, woods, and units that are lower than both the firing hex and the target hex, or lower than just the firing hex, will obscure the line of sight. Here, the artillery unit firing from hex 1615 to hex 2413 is obscured by the woods in 2313. If a unit was in hex 2113, the line of sight would be obscured by that circumstance as well, and then we would apply an additional column shift to the left. Here, fire from the Union Artillery Unit at 1522 to hex 2222 is obscured by the woods in hex 2122, as they are lower than the firing unit and at the same level as the target hex. Any intervening terrain elevation, whether occupied by terrain and or units or not, that is higher than both the firing hex and the target hex, or that is at the same level as the firing hex, will block the line of sight. Here, a Union unit firing from hex 1715 to hex 1514 is blocked by hex 1615 because it is higher than both the fire and the target. And in this example, the Union artillery unit firing from hex 1423 to hex 2117 is blocked by hex 1522 because it is at the same elevation as the firing unit. Be aware that units on lower elevation, as the Union Artillery Unit here, can only fire at higher targets if those targets are at the edge of the hill or ridge. Like, for instance, in this case. And this is due to the elevations on this map being presented as wedding cake style hills and ridges. And this is done for simplicity as is absence of any blind zone rules. And once players get acquainted with these aspects of the map, you will be able to resolve many line of sight issues rather quickly. So, this is the end of this line of sight video for a most fearful sacrifice. I will be doing a video on the comprehensive example of play also found in the rulebook for this game. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it gives you an idea of the line of sight rules in this game. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.